and get into our practice for today. However you would like to sit, we're going to do a little bit of flowing here today, connecting that breath with movement. So we'll begin with getting into the breath, inhaling through the nose, reaching the crown of the head high towards your ceiling. And then exhale, draw your shoulders up towards the ears, push them back behind you, squeezing the shoulder blades together and then let the shoulders relax into that shape. We'll do that one more time, that nice breath. Inhale, draw the shoulders up towards the ears. And then as you exhale, push them back, squeeze shoulder blades together, keep the heart lifted as you relax the shoulders down. Taking one more big inhale here, leave the shoulders right where they are. And then as you exhale, tuck the chin in towards the collarbone. Creating that nice length up the back of the neck. If this is enough, hang out right here. If you want a little bit more for that neck stretch, you can interlace your fingers behind your head and just let the elbows fall forward, applying just a little bit of pressure there. It feels quite delightful. And then if your hands are on the back of your head, you're going to open up the elbows. If your hands aren't there, just lift the chin. And open way up. And then exhale, squeeze those elbows together. This time round through the back as you hollow out and create a little ball over the legs. And then last one, inhale, lift, open the elbows, lift the heart. Let the hands fall down towards the sides. Bring the hands behind you and use them, your fingers, to help you arch through the back and drop the head maybe back behind you. If that doesn't feel good, so that's not a really great feeling for everyone. It's very vulnerable. You can keep the chin right where it is or even tuck it down. And then as we exhale, crawl the hands forward, find your way into a nice forward fold over your legs. So depending on what you've got going on today, you might not fold all the way to the mat. That's okay. You might come just about halfway down. Wherever you end up, squeeze down towards the mat. So the seat comes way into the mat here. Head is heavy. We're going to walk the hands all the way over towards the left side and take a nice side lean here. Probably feel it up the flank, the side body. Walk all the way over towards the left side. Or other side, whatever that might be. I just realized I said left twice. Come back through center. Walk the hands back. Switch the orientation of legs. So if you're sitting crisscross applesauce, flip them to the other side. If you just have one foot in front of the other, whichever one is in front gets flipped. So the opposite one is in front. Realign your seat and then go ahead and fold back down over the legs. Maybe this time you get a little bit more depth. Maybe this side is not as cooperative. Going the opposite way this time, over towards the right or the second left, whatever you want to call it today. And then take your hands to the other side. Enjoy that nice stretch. Coming all the way back through center, lifting back up. Let's go ahead and come onto your, um, kind of onto your seat, onto your back here. We're going to start with a little bit of core work to get us kind of warmed up here. So uh, come into your Navasana, your uh, boat pose. You can either lift both of your feet, kind of rock back onto your pockets and extend the hands forward. You're going to hang out here in this boat pose or Navasana. If this is not working for you, you can float the toes down to the mat or even hold on to them. And then from here, either using your hands or not, we're going to extend the legs out and long as you lower down and just hover over the mat. So the feet don't touch, the shoulders don't touch. And then draw everything in and maybe make a little ball here. 
So however much you have the capacity for today is how much you're going to do. So if you need to use your hands and use your hands, if you need them on the floor, go ahead and do what you need to do. It's still warming up through the core, which is really all we're doing. We're going to do a total of five of them. So reach the toes out long, reach long with the shoulders, and then come on back. Again, if you're modifying, it looks kind of like this. This is number three. Beautiful. And then this is number four. And then I promise at the end of five, we're coming all the way down to the mat. Here's number five. We're going to lower all the way down with the heels and the shoulders come down. So walking your feet a little bit wider than hip width here, cross the left leg just gently over the right and let the right knee come down towards the mat. So just a gentle twist to open up. The arms are stretched out nice and long here. If you have more space, maybe cactus arms are even grabbing opposite elbows overhead. But check in. If you have tension somewhere, back out. Come back at it. Go ahead and release the hands back out to that T-shape if they're not already there. Scooch that right knee up towards the mat, place the left foot on the mat. Again, about as wide as your mat to start. Cross the right ankle over the left knee and then twist towards your right. So the left knee falls inwards. And you're using that foot to give you the extra weight there. Just take a few moments here. Unravel this twist, bring the feet to the mat, and then just gently wiggle, do anything you need to, pull the knees in, give yourself a nice heart ha, squeeze there. We're going to roll up. So if you have the space and you have the desire, you can take a few of these rock and roll forward and back, enjoying that nice massage of the spine. And then eventually we're all just going to pop right over the legs and step back into your plank shape. Knees can come to the mat anytime you need to here. Hips are low zip up through the whole core. So that's belly button to spine, shoulders to hips. And then make sure that the insides of the elbows are pointing forward here. Fingers are nice and wide. Belly button pulls back towards the spine. And then lift the tailbone up and back, downward facing dog. So for the first one, you can walk the toes a little bit closer to the hands. You can bend the knees. Anything that feels like it makes space for you here. We'll take three total breaths, so two more here. Inhale, create that space, push away from the hands. Exhale, create length down the back of the body. Inhale. And then exhale. Look up towards the hands, as many steps or maybe hop all the way up until those feet are right behind the wrists. Lifting up the foot, sliding the hand underneath until you get the toes just behind the wrists here. You can wiggle your toes or do whatever you, whatever feels good here. Drop the head, maybe bend the knees. If getting your hands underneath there doesn't work for you, you can always grab onto the toes or you can just let the fingers drape. We don't really put the hands in this position during our practice at all, so it's a nice, it's a nice stretch here. Maybe start to bend the elbows out towards the side as you get a little warmer. Next inhale, release the fingers. Root down through all four corners of the feet. Feet are just about underneath your hips. Reach the arms nice and wide as you come all the way up. Press palms together at the top. Look up. Draw the hands down towards heart center. Maybe even to find your center, you just put the thumbs right in between 
right in the sternum there. So right in the middle of your chest. Press palms together, shoulders come down and back. And then maybe close your eyes here. Root down through all four corners of the feet, lift the crown of the head nice and tall, and set an intention for your day. Maybe your intention today is to just simply be. Right? Can we do that? Can we shut off our emails? Or if we're working all day, can we only check our emails a couple times? Can we turn off extraneous stimulus that we might not need and just experience the day? Go ahead and inhale, allow the eyes to blink open if they're not already. Reach the arms all the way up, look up, take that arch in the back and then sweep the arms nice and wide as you fold down over the legs. Inhale for a half lift. Fingertips are on the mat here. Maybe they're totally on the floor, whatever you need to do to get that flat back. Step back with the right foot, nice and long, and then that right knee comes down to the mat. You can uncurl those toes and reach the arms all the way up for our low lunge, our Anjani. Maybe you look up. Keep some space between the hands on this first one. Turn your pinkies so that they're kind of towards each other so the palms face almost back behind you. Beautiful, both hands come down either side of that front foot. We're going to step forward, curl the toes under and step forward, hip width and melt over the legs. Crown of the head. So the very tip top of your head reaches towards the mat. Inhale, half lift, exhale, same breath, plant the hands and bring that back knee or that left knee down behind you. Other side, reach up. Again, keeping that space on this first round. Both hands come down either side of that front foot. We're going to step forward again, back into that forward fold. This time, root to rise, sweep the arms nice and wide. Press palms together at the top and then draw them down, maybe pulling the thumb into the middle of your heart space there, right into the chest, the sternum there. And release any extra exhale you have here. All right, let's keep going. Inhale, reach up, press palms, take that back bend, exhale, sweep and dive. Inhale, half lift, exhale, right foot goes back, right knee comes down, both arms reach all the way up. This time, interlacing the fingers overhead, pulling the biceps back. Now, as I keep, keep off, Offering new things if it doesn't feel right, stay with what we did previously. Nice. Both hands come down either side of the front foot, curl the toes under, lift the knee, step back with the left foot. Now we're back in that plank shape. Yogi's choice here. I'm going to walk you through knees down version. Knees come down, release the toes, slide down between the arms all the way to the mat. Inhale, lift the head, heart, and shoulders. Look towards the edge of your mat or the wall out in front of you. And then lower down, curl the toes straight up and back into your downward facing dog. Right leg reaches up and open. Open up that hip, so bend the knee, flex the foot, push that left heel down towards the mat. So if you notice that you're starting to look a little bit askew on the upper half. Just back out of it a little bit. You want your shoulders square. And then go ahead and draw that knee in towards the nose as we step forward between the hands and reach all the way up. We are in a high lunge now. Same leg is forward, right leg is forward. Beautiful, both hands come down either side of that front foot. Step forward, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise all the way up. Press palms together. Exhale, fold straight back down. Inhale, half lift. Step back, left knee this time. Left knee comes back to or down to the floor. Reach all the way up, low lunge. Nice. Interlace the fingers, pull the arms back. Maybe point a little bit towards the back of the room. And then, because I'm not there to watch, so take a look down. I just noticed I was doing it. Take a look down, push your heel into the mat and make sure that you're not folding that 
right leg in towards the middle or out towards the outside. You want that knee right over the ankle there. Beautiful, both hands come down either side of that front foot. Curl the left toes under, step back, back into that plank shape. Here we are again. Nice, any way you wanna get down there, you can take a chaturanga this time, just that half push up, and then scoop up and into your up dog. You can use knees if that works better. And then back into your downward facing dog. Left leg reaches up and open. Right heel presses towards the mat. Step forward between the hands and we're coming into that crescent warrior. So plant that left foot down, bend the left knee, reach all the way up. Nice. Perfect, both hands down either side of that front foot, stepping forward and then melt over the legs, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise all the way up, press palms together, and then exhale, hands come to heart center. So that was one round. We moved through it a little bit slowly. We're going to go through that just a little bit quicker this time, which doesn't make it any more complicated. It just adds that breath piece. So you really have to kind of think about it. Inhale, reach up, all the way up. Inhale, press palms. Exhale, fold. The good thing about vinyasa, inhale, half lift, is you can get lost in the movement if you connect the breath and movement. Right leg comes back, right knee comes down. Inhale, reach all, all the way up, interlace the fingers, low lunge. Exhale, hands come down, step back into that plank shape. If the vinyasa isn't for you, hang out and down dog. You can skip any of these that you don't want. Everybody meets in that downward facing dog. Right leg reaches up open, press left heel to the mat, look back towards that leg, and then step through between the hands with that right foot, inhale all the way up, crescent warrior. Nice, both hands come down either side of that front foot, step forward, forward fold, and then root to rise, sweep all the way up, half way through, hands to heart center. Inhale, reach. Press palms, little back bend, exhale, fold. Make the breath last that whole movement. Inhale, half lift, exhale, left leg comes back, knee comes down, one breath, and then inhale all the way up, one breath. Both hands down either side of that front foot into your plank, all one breath. Nice, inhale, hold here. Exhale through your chaturanga, into your up dog is an in breath. Exhale, down breath, or down dog. Left leg reaches up and back, open the hip, bend the knee, flex the foot. Beautiful, step forward and inhale all the way up, crescent warrior. Nice. Exhale, both hands down either side of that front foot, step forward into your forward fold. All right, we're gonna take a little break here. Move your feet to the kind of outsides of your mat, just about, so the edge of your foot is just about to the edge of the mat. Everybody's going to be a little different here. And then go ahead and walk your hand, your right hand to your left foot, maybe grabbing onto the thigh, outside of the knee, the foot, wherever you can get. And then bring that left arm up and open. So taking a twist here. So it's a fold and a twist. So you're trying to root down through all four corners of the feet here so that you're not swaying to one side or the other. You're planted right there looking up at that left hand. If you need to bend a knee to find that open, go ahead. Left arm comes down over to the other side and sweep that right arm up and open. Now for me, this way is a bit of a challenge. You'll see, I can't get that arm all the way up. That's okay. You just reach for wherever you can and still stay centered here. So I'm still feeling that twist through the torso, even though I'm not taking that huge open that I had on the other side. Perfect. Both hands come down, heel toe your feet back towards each other. Sweep the arms nice and wide, root to rise all the way up press palms together, and then find that heart center. 
Very nice. We're going to take about three breaths here. Let it all go. Let it all melt away. Come back to that intention to simply be present. Simply be there. Not every yoga class is going to appeal to every mood exactly as you need it. How does it show up for you today? Is it just what you needed? Is it a little struggle? It's okay. Go ahead and allow the eyes to blink open. We're going to keep going here. Inhale, reach all the way up. Press palms together. Little tiny back bend. Exhale, melt and fold. Inhale, half lift. Let's step that right foot back. Knee comes down. If at any point this knee coming down becomes cumbersome, you can keep it up. Inhale, lift. Nice. Let's press palms together. Draw hands to heart center. Turn and look over the left shoulder and hook that right elbow over the thigh. And then again, you're trying to find that heart center that we've been working on. So pressing the palms together, peeling that shoulder up and open like we did in that twist so that your hands are getting more aligned to the middle of your body. Nice. If you want to work a little stronger here, you can curl that back toe under and lift the knee off the mat. Good. Inhale, unwind, unravel, crescent warrior. Exhale, both hands come down either side of that front foot, step back. We're taking our vinyasa here. Exhale down. Inhale to lift. Exhale to fold. Downward facing dog. Right leg reaches up on the inhale, open the hip, bend the knee, flex the foot, step forward between the hands. This time we plant that back foot down, warrior one. Reach up. So it's exactly like that crescent but it's just a little bit more intense keeping the hips both uh, facing forward. Reach up, look up, sink down with that thigh. Nice, hands come to heart center. We're just going to hinge over that front leg and look down towards the big toe. Now, peeling that back heel off the mat, rooting down, and floating into your warrior three. So that back leg is floating-ish. Maybe float the hands behind you. And then try to take the curve out of the lower back by pulling in through the core. That's why we did that core work earlier. Nice. So bring the hands back to heart center. We're going to bend into that right leg. Plant the left foot down so it's heel arch alignment and windmill open into your warrior two. Relax your shoulders here. Melt down. Good. Find two breaths right here. Maybe slide that foot back a little bit, sink a little lower. Do whatever you need to do to adjust here. Beautiful. Reverse the palm on that front hand. Right hand reaches up, reverse your warrior. And then bring that left hand down inside the front foot. Spin the back heel up and take your easy twist here. Right hand reaches up. Nice, both hands come down either side of that front foot. We're just going to step forward into your forward fold. Root to rise, sweep all the way up, inhale, lift. Press palms together, hands come to heart center. All right, we're gonna do that the other side. Inhale, up, exhale, sweep and fold. Inhale, half lift, nice left leg steps back, knee comes down. Inhale, reach up on Johnny. Press palms together. Nice, hands come down to heart center, twist and turn, look over that right shoulder and find that hook of the elbow on the thigh. So again, you can curl the toe up and lift up here on that left knee. Keep pulling the legs towards the midline. So you really have to squeeze everything towards the middle. Maybe look up. Nice. Inhale, unwind, unravel, reach all the way back up. 
Ooh -wee. There you go, balance challenge. Perfect, both hands come down either side of that front foot, step back through your vinyasa, lower down. Inhale, scoop up for your up dog, exhale into your down dog. Nice. All right, left leg reaches up and open. Open the hip, bend the knee, flex the foot, push right foot towards the mat. Step the left foot in between the hands, plant right foot down, heel, heel alignment, reach up, warrior one. Or, yeah, warrior one. I was ahead of myself. Sink into this shape. See if you can squeeze that pinky toe on that right side down on the mat. Nice. Hands come to heart center. Hinge, look down at your left big toe. Spin the heel up on the back foot. Float into that warrior three. Nice. I like to flex my foot. I guess you could do anything here as long as it feels stable to you. Maybe the arms reach behind you. We're going to gently float into that warrior two. Bend the knee on that left leg, plant the right foot down, and then windmill open. Sink low. Squeeze the pinky on that right foot down towards the mat. Sink into it. Two breaths here. Inhale. Find length. Exhale. Find ease. Flip the palm. Reverse your warrior. And then on your exhale, right hand comes forward, right heel spins up. Easy twist, right hand comes down, left arm goes up. Nice. Got to squeeze the legs together. Maybe you can get a little lower into it. Perfect. Both hands come down. Either side of that front foot, we're going to step forward. Big toes touch, perhaps coming into our forward fold, a little space between the heels. Now we're coming into our chair pose. If you prefer a little wider stance with the feet for chair, then you can go ahead and walk those feet out. I like just about a finger's width between. Sink the hips nice and low, root back, and then reach the arms out in front of you. So you're starting out pretty low here. And then as you take the curve out of the spine and start to shine the heart forward. You actually lose a little bit of the seat, but you gain a lot of the heat here. Nice. Beautiful. One more breath here. Inhale, reach, reach, reach. Sink, sink, sink. Reach, relax. There's like so much going on in the pose. Hands come to heart center, come way up onto the toes, and then sit down. We're coming right to our boat pose. Hips come down, use your hands to help you if you need to, and then float the feet off the mat, reach the arms forward. I'm not going to make us do the, that core work again. You can hang out here, you can use your hands, but you wanna think long spine here. Nice, maybe start to play around with extending the legs long if you wanna work more through the whole core here. Beautiful, pull those knees in, bring the toes down, and then wrap your arms around your shins. Give yourself a nice big hug. Forehead comes to the knees here. Open up through that space in the back. Inhale, lift up out of this shape. Go ahead and bring your hands down behind you. Extend the legs nice and long. And then realign your seat here. So make sure that you're sitting all the way down on your seat, about midway down your back, your mat. Bring the toes back towards your face. Reach your arms all the way up. Maybe interlacing the fingers. Maybe reach the index finger, point up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, point that finger as if you're pointing, uh, painting a rainbow. And then maybe 
if you have it in your practice, you might hook those interlaced fingers around the toes, around the feet. If that is just not happening today, that's okay. You just fold and grab on wherever you are. So I've said it a gazillion times, reaching your feet is not any uh, measure of your human worth. It's not any measure of your practice. It's literally just about anatomy. And it changes from day to day. Inhale, release the hands, walk your hands back up towards your legs. All right, we are going to take a little twist here. So keep that right leg nice and long. Step that left leg to the outside of the right foot. For most of us, this is where we're gonna hang out. If you have a little bit more flexibility or want a deeper stretch, you're going to fold that right leg behind you and keep that left foot planted right on the mat. Left hand reaches behind you. Both sit bones are rooting down, right arm reaches up. Now again, if twisting isn't your jam today, you can just reach the arm around the front of that knee. But if you want a deeper stretch, you're just going to, like we did with that twist, hook the elbow on the outside of the thigh and look out over the back leg. So bring your attention back to your body. This is for sure not the time to evaluate the number of spiders in the corner or whatever's going on around you. It's definitely a time to focus on what's happening in your body. Is your left shoulder coming up by your ear? If so, can you adjust to relax it back and down? Are you huddling yourself into a ball to avoid the stretch? Maybe you can release somewhere. And then go ahead and inhale, unwind, unravel, unravel those legs. And then just bring them out in front of you and give them a little shake side to side. Remember which one was on top though. I'll try to remember, but you know I'm not very, not very good at that. I'm unreliable when it comes to right and left. All right, I think it's your left leg is going to go really strong. That feels or straight, that feels right to me. So we're gonna step the right leg to the outside of the left. And before you go anywhere, root your sit bones down. All right, sit them down, glue them to the mat. Sweep this left leg towards your right hip if you did it on the other side. If you didn't do it on one side, don't worry about it on the other. If you wanna try it and then back out, you can do that too. Right hand comes behind you, left arm reaches up and then spin, look over the shoulder and hook the elbow on the knee. Again, not the time to be judgmental about what's going on in your world. Just observe. Just notice. Is this side more accessible? Is this side more of a challenge? Do you feel yourself taking it easy on one side versus the other? How does this pose show up for you? Let's go ahead and unravel unwind, come back through center. Again, unwrap those legs, bring the feet down and take a couple of those windshield wipers here. Just a little to the front and the back, side to side. Nice, all right, we did a little core work. We're going to do a little bit of back work. Find your way to your belly on your mat, however you would like to get there. We're going to do a couple of things here. So beginning with some cobra rolls. So hands are underneath the shoulders. Tops of the feet are on the mat. Elbows are back behind you like chicken wings. Inhale, lift the head, heart, and shoulders and engage the kind of mid back here to lift just the head, heart, and shoulders off the mat. So the lowest ribs are still on the mat. Push down through 
kind of the belly button between the ribs and the belly button. Push that into the mat. Take a nice big in breath. And then lift head, heart, and shoulders a little bit more. Exhale, lower all the way down. A little bit more in this next one. So coming up onto your fingertips, inhale a little bit higher perhaps. If you notice that it's not working for you, back out of it, go back to the other one, lower down. And then we're just going to float the fingers, lift up off the mat. If it works for you, you're going to float the toes. And then lower all the way down. Turn your head towards the right, lower the left side of your face to the mat, arms come down by your side and just melt over the mat here. All right, one more. Inhale, look forward, sweep the arms behind you. You can take any placement that you wanted from before, if that's better for you. And then interlace those fingers. Try to squeeze the heels of the hands together. Inhale, lift up, reach the arms back. Try to float them off your hips. And then maybe the toes float as well. Again, everybody has their own version of back bend here. Some people might be a U shape. Nice, go ahead and lower all the way down. Turn, look towards the left side. This time, right, face, right side of your face comes down. Release the hands down by your side. Become very heavy here. Super duper heavy. Walk your hands underneath your shoulders. Push back, find your way to a child's pose. hips right to the heels. You can keep legs close together or nice and wide, whatever's calling you today. Forehead comes to the mat and let the skin on your face just kind of slide forward. None of us like to think about that, but it happens. Walk your hands back underneath your shoulders. Start to lift back up off the legs, down over the heels here. Coming into, before we go into our final shape, coming into just a little bitty camel. So it's entirely up to you how much of a camel you take here. Lift your hips up over your knees. I prefer a tiny space in between my legs so just about maybe I don't know, maybe two inches there so that my knees aren't really close together bring your hands to your hip points and then slide them behind you fingers point down right on your hips so fingers are pointing down the booty like you're sliding in your pockets elbows squeeze behind you now, for most of us, this is enough. You're going to engage the mula bandha, the pelvic floor here. So you're pulling up and in with that space between the belly button and the pubic bone. You're really drawing that up, engaging there. Now that's going to strengthen you as you find this back bend, starting to peel down towards the heels. This is enough for almost, I'd say, 80% of us. We don't need to go any further. We've got the back bend. We're opening up that throat chakra. Much to our spouse's dismay, opening up that throat chakra to free our speech. <laughs> Curl your toes under if you want to go a little bit further so the heels come a little bit higher. And then you have a choice here. You can reach back with your left hand and place it on the left heel. If that feels like mm, that's enough, then you can put that hand back and go to the other side. If you think, hmm, I still have a little bit of room to bend into this back bend, you can put both fingers on the heels and open up. And then go ahead and release. Ooh, coming back out the same way we came in. Find your way into a child's pose just for a moment. Counterbalance that shape squeeze the hands towards the mat and really wring out the lower back. Mm. 
push through that area right where the waist meets the hips. And then walk yourself back up out of this child's pose. Sweep the legs around in front of you. And you've earned your resting shape. Or I heard somebody call it the other day, pancake. I like to think I've earned my pancakes. Reach your feet to either corner of the mat. And then your hands come down by your sides. Palms are up, shoulders melt down. And then once you find your resting shape, whatever you want to call it, Shavasana, corpse, pancake, whatever you're calling it today, let it be heavy and take up space. So much of our life we're taught to be small, but I encourage you to take up much space here. And then let everything else drift away. And just take this space to follow the breath. beginning to add movement to fingers and toes. Rolling over to your side, resting your head on your arm, maybe drawing the knees in towards your body. Simply be present here in this space between working your way towards any seat that feels perfect for you here in this moment. Whatever shape calls to you. Bringing hands to heart center and remembering your intention to be simply present or whatever your intention might have been today. Thank you so much for joining me on the mat. Have a fabulous rest of your week and enjoy your weekend. We're going to pretend it's not going to snow. Namaste.